All right, our big story tonight, the former interim DNC chair, Donna Brazil, is now saying that she has the smoking gun evidence that Hillary Clinton rigged the DNC in order to keep socialists from Vermont, Bernie Sanders, from winning the Democratic primary. Donna Brazil is making the revelations in her new book, which will be out next week. This is massive. Now, keep in mind, this is something President Trump, he's been saying for months. You may remember this. The DNC, Democratic National Committee, rigged the Democratic election, the primary process, to take it away from Bernie and give it to Hillary Clinton. The DNC vice chair was caught feeding information about Bernie Sanders' plans to the Clinton campaign. You're not supposed to do that. Well, President Trump was right again. Donna Brazil, in her upcoming book, she describes how she was tasked with investigating the Democratic National Committee after hacked emails suggested, yes, the Clinton campaign was colluding with the DNC. It's even worse than that. Now, one excerpt from the book, Brazil slams her predecessor, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, writing, quote, Debbie was not a good manager. She hadn't been very interested in controlling the party that she let Clinton headquarters in Brooklyn do as it so desired. She didn't have to inform the party officers how bad the situation was, how much control Brooklyn had, and for how long was still something I had been trying to uncover for the last few weeks by September the 7th, the day I called Bernie. I had found my proof, and it broke my heart. Wow, that's powerful. And this shows just how low the Clintons will go to get what they want. Even Senator Elizabeth Warren is now admitting that the DNC primary process was in fact rigged. Watch this. This is a real problem, but what we've got to do as Democrats now is we've got to hold this party accountable. This is a test for Tom Perez, and either he's going to succeed by bringing Bernie Sanders and Bernie Sanders representatives into this process and they're going to say it's fair, it works, we all believe it, or he's going to fail. And I very much hope he succeeds. I hope for Democrats everywhere. I hope for Bernie and for all of Bernie's supporters that very, he's going to succeed. Very quickly, Senator, do you agree with the notion that it was rigged? Yes. Rigged and stolen election primary. Earlier today, Wasserman Schultz gave a statement to the Fox News Channel that completely avoided the topic at hand. It reads this in part, with Donald Trump in the White House, Democrats must stay focused on enacting a progressive agenda to protect our citizens, our values, and our democracy and remain united towards our goal of electing Democratic congressional majorities in 2018. Okay, that's not a denial of anything. But it's a clear example of just what Senator Bernie Sanders was up against in the 2016 Democratic primary. I had said it many times. Now, just moments ago, the president, Donald Trump, he tweeted, Donna Brazil just stated the DNC rigged the system to illegally steal the primary from Bernie Sanders. Bought and paid for by crooked Hillary, this is real collusion and dishonesty, major violation of campaign finance laws and money laundering. Where is our Justice Department? Great questions. Now, this Clinton crime family, because that's what they really are, and their political machine, was willing to put all ethics aside, do nothing, anything, everything they could do to mow down the one man, anybody that stood in their way. Now, stop and think about this for a minute. Could you just imagine if today it was revealed President Trump if he was accused and there's evidence that he rigged the RNC in the primary in his favor to help him and steal an election, could you imagine the outrage from the alt-left mainstream media? There would be calls for investigations into this all day. But today, because this is a bad story for Democrats, your media, which is so corrupt, they're barely covering it. This is a breathtaking moment. Hillary Clinton, she's the former Secretary of State, former First Lady of our country, the former Senator, former First Lady of Arkansas, rigged and stole a primary election. Just look at Clinton right there at the Democratic National Convention. She stole those moments. Think about that for a minute. What is the most basic things you teach your children in life? Let's see, you need to be fair, honest, trustworthy, you shouldn't lie, you shouldn't cheat, and you shouldn't steal. Well, when it comes to Hillary Clinton, she didn't embody 
one of those principles, and it proves nothing was going to stop Hillary Clinton's blind ambition. Now, when it comes to emails, after they were subpoenaed, if we had subpoenaed emails, we'd have to turn them over. She didn't want you to see them. What did she do? Oh, she deleted them, acid washed them. She, she used bleach bits, smashed devices with hammers. When it comes to Hillary Clinton, there's zero stopping this woman. No law, no subpoena, no warrant, no ethics guide this woman's life. This is by far the worst thing, and I've covered the Clintons for years, they have ever done. Hillary Clinton accuses President Trump of collusion, and she stole, bought, and paid for the fake anti-Trump dossier, and it doesn't matter in the process. She sold our security out in this country, Uranium One. We're talking about the most unethical person I have ever seen in my entire life. And by the way, Bernie Sanders, you never stood a shot. And speaking to you, Bernie, you should be ashamed of yourself. You knew, you knew, you were told there's evidence that that primary was stolen. And you ended up supporting her anyway? You said nothing? This woman had zero ethics. Bernie Sanders would have literally elected a person, and he covered for a person who stole hit the election with him. He apparently was okay with that. I don't know what's wrong with you, Bernie. And for all of you that voted tonight for Hillary Clinton, this is the person that you wanted to be your president. This disgrace will follow her the rest of her life. Also tonight, while Hillary Clinton was apparently running the DNC, she was in charge of it, she was also using their funds to pay a former foreign spy to make up those salacious, untrue accusations in the dossier about President Trump, then candidate Trump. Now, Hillary Clinton has broken her silence on the dossier. Finally, the one she helped fund, that she was running through a law firm. Here's what she told The Daily Show's Trevor Noah last night. Is there a difference between your team paying for this opposition research uh, and Donald Trump's people working with the Russians to influence the election. Is there a difference? Of course there is. And, you know, I think most serious people understand that. This was uh, research started by a Republican donor during the Republican primary. And then when Trump got the nomination uh, for the Republican Party, uh, the people doing it came to my campaign lawyer and said, you know, would you like us to continue it? Right. And, and he said, yes, he's an experienced lawyer. He knows what the law is. He knows what opposition research is. Did you, just, did you just hear her? What you have there, what she's admitting to, is real, actual Russian propaganda lies that she bought and paid for, the Clinton political machine and the Democratic Party, the DNC she's running, that they funded through a third-party source in what was a shameless attempt to steal the election by lying to you. The American people. The president was asked by our own Laura Ingram earlier today about this very thing. Watch this. That uh, dossier, which is totally fake and made up, it's like a novel, but that dossier is a disgrace and it should not have been allowed to be used. And then I hear the kind of money they spent. Nine million. I mean, it's inconceivable. It's absolutely inconceivable. It's horrible. But we don't know who authorized payment. We don't really yet have Well, they're trying record. to find out, and we'll find out, but they really, uh, I think it's a disgrace that a thing like that can take place. Beyond a disgrace. That was all designed to manipulate the American people. The president's right. Crooked Hillary Clinton was caught in the act, using a foreign source to influence the election, steal the election again. If you need any more evidence that Hillary Clinton was willing to do anything and everything to win the 2016 election, you need to look no further than that dossier. Now, remember, that was full of lies, propaganda, salacious details. She lost miserably in the election, and now America is really, truly getting to know the dark, ruthless side of Hillary Clinton. Now, we're going to get to back, back to that in just a few minutes. But first, we have another story, almost too shocking to believe. Twitter's lawyer admitted earlier today, this week, to lawmakers that the social media giant, you know Twitter, we all use Twitter, that they literally hid tweets and hashtags that were connected to the DNC and John Podesta's emails. Now, in his prepared testimony before the Senate Subcommittee on Crime and Terrorism, Twitter's acting general counsel acknowledged Twitter hid over 60,000 tweets with the hashtag DNC leak and hit another 106,000 tweets with the hashtag Podesta emails. Now, 
Could this be a serious violation of federal law? We'll have an investigation in a minute. Either way, it is clear evidence that Twitter was holding water for the Clinton campaign, and Democrats have the gall to complain about fake news on Facebook. The hypocrisy is breathtaking. We'll follow that story. And also tonight, for months, we have been exposing the most dangerous Clinton scandal of all. That's the Uranium One scandal. Tonight, we have even more new damning information to bring you. The Hills, John Solomon, Allison Spann, they are out tonight with another absolutely stunning report. The headline is this, Uranium One deal led to some exports to Europe. This has been the number one excuse they've been, they've been telling us. John Solomon is reporting tonight that after the Obama administration approved the sale of Uranium One. Now remember, 2009, we know, knew about lies and bribes and kickbacks and extortion, money laundering and racketeering. And they still allowed the deal through. But anyway, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission gave assurances the raw nuclear fuel would never be export, exported out of this country. But Solomon, he obtained the NRC memos they did approve the shipment of yellow cake uranium from the U.S. to Canada through a third-party trucking company. And unbelievably, some of that nuclear material made its way all the way to Europe, maybe even Asia. John Solomon writes, quote, Uranium One exports flowed from Wyoming to Canada onto Europe between 2012 and 2014, and the approval involved a process with multiple agencies. Now, the American branch of Uranium One gave a statement to the Hill confirming it did export uranium to Canada through the trucking firm and that 25 percent of that nuclear fuel made its way outside of North America to Europe and Asia. Wow. This has been their number one excuse. They stressed the exports complied with federal law. Yeah, because they used the company and then they didn't have to get their own license. And a statement from the Nuclear Regulatory Commission reads in part, the NRC licensing actions complied with the Atomic Energy Act, Section 123 agreement, where the receiving country, in this case Canada, is required to commit to use the material for only peaceful purposes. By the way, does anyone at home know we import uranium because we don't have enough? So when the uranium made its way to Canada, to Europe, what then? How did that happen? Now, if this material is crossing the Atlantic, what is preventing it from getting into Russia? And the question remains, why in the hell would anybody approve the sale of 20% of America's uranium to Vladimir Putin and the bad actor he is and the hostile regime Russia, government approved by Hillary Clinton, Eric Holder, other high-ranking officials in the Obama administration? John Solomon, Sarah Carter, they will join us. They will give us a full investigative report. All right, but first, a lot of ground to cover. Joining us now, the author of Clinton Cash, the president of the Government Accountability Institute, Peter Schweitzer, Fox News legal analyst, Greg Jarrett. I start on the legal side. She stole a primary. She funneled money into a law firm, both controlling the DNC and her funds to pay for a phony dossier, and she now admits it. Crimes? A lot of crimes. Uh, this would appear to be um, an elaborate, clever scheme by Hillary Clinton. The DNC was broke, so Hillary bails them out with 20 million, but in exchange, she gets the DNC to sign an agreement that she gets control over their finances, their Everything. strategy, their support. <laughs> so then they go out on these joint fundraisers during the campaign. They raise up to $100 million. And here's the other deception. The states take their share, but immediately kick it back to the DNC, which kicks their share and the state's share back to Hillary Clinton for her use. That could be a violation of three laws, campaign contribution limits, the finance reporting laws, and it looks to me like money laundering, illegally money being moved around to you know, look legitimate. I, I got to ask, where is... I've always liked Jeff Sessions. I am now at the I am now at the limit. Where is he? What is he doing? Because there's so much crime, so many crimes. We have put the crimes in play on the screen that you have identified and you've been a great lawyer, great investigator, great researcher. I don't see that the same attention and effort of known law-breaking is even being followed. Nice man Jeff Sessions, incompetent attorney general. I think he's being manipulated by Rod Rosenstein, his deputy attorney general. 
Um, and I think he has recused himself so many times, the Trump-Russia case, anything related to Hillary, that now he is intimidated, uh, too intimidated to make the right legal move. You know, when you wrote Clinton Cash, number one New York Times bestseller, I'm proud we had the first interview. We put you on many times, Peter. I don't think we ever imagined this bad, but it's worse than bad. It's worse than this bad. Um, stealing an election, taking over the DNC, admitting to funding the, the phony Russian lies propaganda dossier. She funded the whole thing either through her campaign or through the DNC she was controlling now. The whole thing. She's admitting the whole thing. Then the Uranium One deal. And you know, everyone in the media says, well, Hannity, why are you talking about Clinton? Because we have a constitution, rule of law, equal justice under the law, and they're not living by the same rules as the rest of us. They do whatever they want. They smash blackberries, they bleach bit subpoenaed emails, they delete emails, and then they get kickbacks for selling out America's security. This is not a game. This is not funny. And then poor Bernie Sanders, the sucker sap he is, he accepts all of this and says nothing. He covers it up for her. Your thoughts? Yeah, no, you're right, Sean. I mean, look, the Clinton uh, message has always been that, you know, the attacks on them are sort of from the right wing, vast right wing conspiracy. Can't say that about Donna Brazile. I mean, she was one of their most loyal lieutenants for a very long time. She said she'd never the take the job if she knew. Yeah, yeah. And, and here's the thing, Sean, what do all of these scandals have in common? Money. The Clintons have been, since they've been in public life, going back to the days in Arkansas, they've been about controlling money, acquiring money, using money as a weapon, using money as a means to power. And they really are the one political machine left at the national level in American politics. I think they're under assault right now from uh, the Obama team, uh, from the Bernie Sanders supporters. But all of these things come together uh, as it relates to the infrastructure of acquiring money and using money. And what they ran into in, in 2008 with Barack Obama and in 2016, were basically populist or popular campaigns that, that defeated their attempt to buy the nomination and the election in 2008 and 2016. Let, let me go back to Greg. After all this talk about the dossier and all the denials, <laughs> that's like on the Uranium One news right. we'll break in a minute. All denials, all lies. And she stole an election. Right. And she says there's a difference between the dossier she funded, Russian lies, propaganda, misinformation, disinformation that was widespread to right. manipulate the American people. And she rigged an election, stole an election. Well, she's right about that. There is a difference between her pain for the dossier and Trump Russia so called collusion. Uh, but not in the way she means. What she did appears to have been a crime. It's a crime to give money to a foreign national in a political campaign. That's what she did. It's not a crime for Donald Trump Jr. to talk to a Russian lawyer or George Papadopoulos to talk to a Russian during the this campaign. Is bought, this is different. This isn't, oh, I've got information, do you want to hear it? This is, I'm paying for the false information. Right. It's the exchange of money that the law prohibits. The Trump campaign, there's no evidence there was an exchange of money. It's not a crime to talk to a Russian, but Hillary Clinton, it could be a crime not only paying the money, but then hiding it by filing a false misleading finance report. And they funneled it through the same law firm, the whole thing. Oh, yeah, Mark Elias, who represents not just as general counsel the DNC, he's also the lawyer for the Hillary Clinton campaign, and he represents mm. the Podesta group, or the Podestas. Talk about a conflict of interest. Let me go back to you, Peter Schweitzer, because we have this new news on Uranium One. John Solomon, Sarah Carter are going to be here. I want to get your thoughts. Wow, because the number one excuse they have been using, it never left the United States. Well, first of all, we import uranium. The idea that we're going to give 20% of uranium to Putin never made sense. We don't have enough for ourselves. We have to bring in uranium to this country. Your reaction to that? Yeah, no, that's exactly right. This is another devastating development uh, in the Clinton narrative. And look, Sean, let's remember, who is Rosatom? Rosatom, the Russian State Atomic Agency, is not like our Department of Energy. Rosatom in Russia, it controls the Russian nuclear arsenal. 
It is involved in nuclear programs in Iran, North Korea, and Jeez. elsewhere. So it's not a surprise. It's not a surprise that if you give them control of uranium assets, they're not going to worry about export licenses or promises that they made to the Obama administration about what they were going to use with their uranium. It's just right. laughable. And there's another reason it needs to be investigated. All right, thank you both. Hillary steals an election. She pays for Russian propaganda. We've got more smoking gun evidence. And, by the way, if you want to comment on this and the Uranium One report that's upcoming, just go to my Twitter account, at Sean Hannity. Tell me, do you think Hillary Clinton stole the election? Of course she did. She's admitting it. We'll tell you about more, that and more straight ahead. And welcome back to Hannity. Joining us now, more reaction to the news. Hillary Clinton rigged, stole the 2016 Democratic primary against Bernie Sanders. Former Clinton pollster, Fox News contributor, Doug Schoen, Florida, Attorney General Pam Bondi. Welcome to New York, by the way. Thank Good to you. see you. You too. Um, look, I don't, you hear me regularly say about the Republicans, they're weak, they're spineless, right. they're gutless, they lack vision, they lack any identity even today. Mm -hmm. I think you are as honest with your party as I am being with mine. Let, let me be honest. This entire process was corrupt. We read what Donna Brazil said. But Bernie Sanders was in the tank himself two days before the California primary asking for speaking engagements in Plains of the Fall. He was in the tank, and Donna Brazil, we know what she did. She was illegally giving questions, or morally, uh, reprehensibly, giving questions that CNN had to uh, the Can Democrats. Can you think of a time in American history that a primary was stolen? I mean, I know we've had walk sure. around money this and all these other things. Stolen. This is stolen. Go in the tank, cheat, lie. This is horrendous. I say this as a Democrat who is still a Democrat. I'm a centrist, middle of the road. I disagree with the Republicans. But how can I defend this? I can't, Sean, and I won't. I don't blame you. Sean, and nor can the Democrats defend it. It's impossible for them to defend it. This is despicable, really, what she did. And now look what, look what Hillary Clinton's doing now. By her book appearances, by all her signings, all her public appearances, she is still, still in control of the Democratic Party. All right, let's talk about laws. You're an attorney general. Greg Jarrett sees potential violations of laws on this and paying for the salacious lies Russian propaganda dossier. dossier, which finally she admitted she mm -hmm. had to because of all the new information out. Um, laws broken? I, I firmly believe there are laws broken. And that, you know, it's interesting because Comey used all the Russian, Russian interest as a reason to get a special prosecutor. Well, now they need to start looking at Hillary Clinton. All right, let's put up on the firmly. screen. Let's put up on the screen if we can. I'll throw my glasses on off camera so you can't see. Um, but it says, this is from Donna Brazil's book. You know, when I got back from a vacation at Martha's Vineyard, I at last found the document that described it all, the joint funding fundraising agreement between the DNC, the Hillary Victory Fund, and Hillary for America. Then it goes on, the agreement signed by Amy Dacey, the former CEO of the DNC, Robbie Mook, who was the manager, uh, with a copy to Mark Elias, remember that name, and I'll tell you more later, specified that in an exchange for raising money and investing in the DNC, Hillary would control the party's finances, their strategy, and all the money raised. And then it goes on. Her campaign had the right of refusal of who would be the party's communication director, and it would make final decisions on all other staff. Now, I, uh, this to me, coming directly from Donna Brazil, and like you, I've known Donna Brazil for years. Mm -hmm. She never would have taken the job. She has ethics. I understand on the question, and I know she regretted it a lot, and she took a lot of heat for it, but put it, put it aside. She's admitting her party is that deeply corrupt and that Hillary controlled the whole thing. I can't so believe again, what I'm reading. Let me be clear. I think, Pam, from what you said, you'd agree with me. Given the Uranium One deal, given the concerns that Greg Jarrett raised, that you've raised, Sean, why wouldn't we have, just in the interest of fairness, a special prosecutor to look at what Hillary did as they're looking at the president? Where is the attorney general, Pam? I, I always like Jeff Sessions. I am sitting here. I am mind-numbingly. I, I, I just cannot understand his inaction on all of these issues. 
Doug is right. We need a special prosecutor. Uranium One giving up 20% of our uranium, all the money kicked back to her. It's the dossier, that's Russian-funded lies and propaganda, stealing a Democratic primary, funneling money through a law firm. There's a break, subpoenaed emails, deleted emails, acid wash emails, bleach bit emails, broken blackberries. How much corruption do we need here for any one individual before something happens? I'm sorry. There has to be something happening. There has to be. And, you know, General Sessions has taken himself completely out of the Russian investigation. So there's a special prosecutor, and Mueller's got to go after Hillary what about, Clinton. How is it possible in 09 that Mueller, the FBI, Eric Holder, had to know they had an FBI informant, they did. that bribery, kickbacks, extortion, money laundering, and racketeering. Putin's spies in America, they knew about it. 2009. Yeah. All of this is happening. Putin wants to corner the uranium market. We don't have enough uranium on our own. Right. He wants to corner the uranium market. And they know about the crimes, and they did nothing. And they allowed this deal to go through. There was a reset with Putin. Remember that famous tape where uh, President Obama said to uh, Russian... Uh, Medvedev. Medvedev. Uh, I'll be able to be more flexible tell, tell, tell in Vladimir. the next term. Tell Vladimir. Yeah. yeah. I mean, but that was in 2012. Yep. But, but, but why would anyone give 20% of our uranium when we don't have enough uranium you, you resources? Wouldn't, Sean, you wouldn't do any of this if we were being rational and logical. And my point, simply, if we're going to investigate the president, which I think is the right thing to do. No evidence of collusion yet. But, but None. let's None. finish the investigation and let's investigate Hillary. But we do have evidence here. We have evidence on, on a stolen election. We have evidence on obstruction of justice, right. uh, ignoring subpoenas, uh, what she paid for, money laundering, I would argue, in the case of the Russian dossier, and now Uranium One, which we gave up our national security, and she gets all that money back. You'd be a great prosecutor, and I wish you were the special prosecutor. I wish I was the attorney general. Yeah. If she didn't know about the 12.6 million that went through Perkins Coal to Fusion GPS, there you go. I'm the queen of Siam. There you go. And no one I think of you're us. You're the queen of where? Siam. Siam. Okay. Siam. I'm a joke, but I got, she knew. No, I understand. I worked for Bill Clinton. She no knew. candidate doesn't know. Did you know she was this deeply corrupt that she would steal a primary? No. I, I could not have fathomed that what we've learned and what you've reported would have happened. Donna it, Brazil. Fortunately, I disavowed her Last before one. the election. I know on you your did. Show. I know you did. Take politics out of this. No one has the right to violate the rules we all share. That's Equal in the jury and justice under Absolutely. the law. Absolutely. I'd be in jail. He'd be in jail. Well, we You'd be would. in jail. We all should be if that happened. And she needs right. to be looked at and must be. We're only touching the surface. Thank you both. Good to see you in New York. Doug, Thank always you. good to Great. see you. Thank you. We have massive new developments on the Uranium One scandal. The two reporters who have been all over this, they're like the Woodward and Bernstein of our day. Solomon, Carter, next, straight ahead. All right, welcome back to Hannity. As we told you in our opening monologue tonight, The Hill's John Solomon has breaking news on the Uranium One scandal. Now his piece out today is entitled Uranium One Deal Led to Some Exports to Europe Memo Show. Sarah Carter from Circa News also has a new report out tonight titled Current DOE Official Once Consulted Four Russian Nuclear Companies. Now we reached out to the official that Sarah mentioned in our article for comment. Surprisingly, we've yet to hear back. Here with more, The Hill's John Solomon and from CircaNews.com. You guys have done such an amazing job. It is so telling. As big as the news you're both breaking tonight, this is our third story. Hillary stealing a primary, all of the information on the dossier, and she now is admitting, oh, but that's not collusion. Let me start, John, with you. Your report came out earlier today, Sarah. Yours just came out now, so we'll get you both in. John, tell us what you know, because we were told as the number one excuse, the uranium right. never went outside the U.S. That talking point is a lie. Yeah, no, it's definitely disproven. There's not any doubt that the uh, U.S. Uh, uh, Nuclear Regulatory Commission authorized through a backdoor, a third party uh, a license, to let Uranium One export to Canada. And then, according to the 
Department of Energy records and according to a statement that Uranium One gave us, some of that uranium left Canada and went to Europe and possibly to Asia. So, do we know uh, where in Europe? We don't. No. Do we know where and in Asia? We do not. No, it's proprietary information, the final destinations, at least so far we've not been able to get that. We'll keep digging, but I think the most important point is, you, you said it in your opening monologue, we're a country that has to imp import most of our uranium. Here's uranium in the United States, and for some reason we let it go to Canada and possibly to uh, Europe and beyond. And I, I think uh, that's been the concern that all the members of Congress, Democrat and Republican, had when this deal went through. And now they're finding out the assurances they were given simply aren't true. Let me stay on your report for a minute, because you also talk about, and this now implicates Barack Obama himself, that they were, you detailed, and I think, I'm guessing this is only going to be the, the start of what you're about to reveal, that Barack Obama purposefully manipulated the process to allow this trucking company to be the conduit by which they got the uranium out of the country. Tell us what you found. Yeah, there, were, there wasn't just one decision. We all look at Uranium One and say, well, they let them buy the mine and 20% of the current ore that was being mined at that time was under their control. But there were a series of decisions made by the Obama administration time and time again between 2010 and 2012 that are incredibly favorable to Rosatom, the state-owned Russian nuclear energy industry. And wow. time and again, these decisions are being made while the FBI knows that there's criminality going on by that company's executives. The bribery, extortion, yeah. the money laundering, the racketeering, and, and so on. Kickbacks and right, yeah. And, mm -hmm. and there's a second thing that I'm just starting to report out now, but there were also concerns in the Obama administration, very specific concerns, that Russia was engaged in a uranium scheme, that it was going to get enough control of uranium, dump it on the market, drive all the prices wow. down, and put all the other people out of business. Those are two legitimate it's, national security concerns it, that don't seem to have had an effect on all these giveaways. It's breathtaking. Our national security company, we don't have enough uranium. All right, Sarah, you have a blockbuster report about this current DOE official consulted for the Russian nuclear company? Yes. Yes. So basically, <laughs> Cheryl Moss Herman, she's now with the Office of Nuclear Energy. And I also reached out to her over the week. Um, in fact, contacted the DOE over a period of a week trying to get more information. But she basically consulted for 10X and 10 And she wrote this analysis. It's an extensive analysis on the U.S. at the time. And remember, Sean, during this time period in 2010, there were so many people in Congress that were outraged. They didn't want this deal to go through. They were really concerned about Russia and Iran, and that connection made them scared. It terrified them of, that, of this deal. But she reassures the Russians in this analysis, look, the 2009 Iran sanctions bill, that's in the past. Now, 2010, there's a less stringent bill that will allow you to move forward with all of your plans. A lot of what John was talking about, which is, you know, going into the U.S. market and really paying penetrating the U.S. market and the U.S. energy market. Right, and, I, now, I, yeah. and now she's with the DOE. Sarah, stay with you. I honestly believe that your reporting has been incredible, both of you, gutsy, courageous. We don't have this in the media today. Sarah, where is this going to end up? We, I was just talking to Greg Jarrett. We don't even have a special counsel. I, 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 it's breathtaking to me. How do we have this, this ability of the Clintons to constantly avoid the law that applies to the rest of us. Sean, that's, that's the most important question. Where does this go from here? In order for this to be fully investigated, it needs a special counsel. There are some things that John and I just cannot, I don't think, legally push forward with, and those are classified. It, that's classified information. Remember, we have an informant that's ready to talk. They are willing to talk to the to congressional members in the House Intelligence Committee in oversight. But there are so many other issues out there, and the more you peel back this onion, the more you find out that there are things of a classified nature, nature yeah. uh, that, that affect our national security that really do need to be investigated. All right, guys, we're going to have you both on tomorrow. We're going to advance the story even further. There's a lot more details. Thank you for what you're doing, both of you. When we come back, me, the rapper, and I have more good news and an announcement and a debate next. You don't want to miss Sebastian Gorka and the Imam Allahi, and we'll explain what should happen to that jihadist in New York that murdered eight innocent New Yorkers. That's straight ahead.
All right, welcome back to Hannity. So President Trump is continuing his call for tough justice against that jihadist that terrorized New York City, killed eight on Tuesday. Now, the president tweeted, quote, NYC, terrorist was happy as he asked to hang the ISIS flag in his hospital room. He killed eight innocent people, badly injured 12. He should get the death penalty. He then followed up with two more tweets saying, would love to send the New York City terrorist to Gitmo, but statistically, that process takes takes much longer than going through the federal system. There's also something appropriate about keeping him in the home of the horrible crime he committed. Should move fast. Death penalty. Amen. Joining us now, reaction of the author of Defeating Jihad, former assistant to President Sebastian, uh, the President Sebastian Gorka, also from the Islamic House of Wisdom, Imam Muhammad Ali Allahi. You think Iran is a good country, don't you, Imam? So are you talking about New York or about Iran now? I'm asking a question. Do you think Iran is a good country? Do you not? I know that somebody is fighting ISIS in the Middle East, Lebanon, Iraq, Iran, I Syria. You're now, All you, of them so are you're fighting saying yes. ISIS. Why don't you just answer the question? I have a very is simple helping them with medical services and sir, Air Force. I, I know that. I have a simple, basic question. Just to answer the question. Do you think Iran is a good country? Do you think it's run by good people? Iran is a great country, Iranian nation, a great uh, nation. Uh, obviously, you know, okay. uh, it's uh, thousands of years of civilization. But let us talk about so the me, subject. So let me you say know, this. The problem, is, the problem with your answer as I bring our other guests in. hate and fear-mongering, Sean, and division and discrimination mm -hmm. and, and bigotry and a stereotype. Death you to, cannot make America great Israel. with this kind of mentality. We have serious problem. So, so, we it. need serious solution, and what, not and silly solution, second, Imam, not Imam, ignorant Imam, solution, Imam, serious we other, solution. We have other guests. Dr. Gorka, they are mm -hmm. one of the number one proxy war funder, exporter of terror in the entire world. And I know Imam Alahi is speaking from his heart. I've interviewed him before. He doesn't, won't condemn this. How do we deal with their export? And you said support, the same thing about Saudi me, Arabia, by the Dr. way. Dr. Gorka, and their support of radical Islamic terror. Sean, when uh, I came into the White House, I was brought in as a strategist to the president to work national security, but specifically counterterrorism. And my focus had been Sunni terrorism. Why? Because of September the 11th, Al-Qaeda, ISIS. Uh, I have to admit, uh, with the briefings I received, uh, with the meetings we had in uh, the sit room in the NSC, uh, over a very short period of time, I realized that we'll crush the Sunni extremists. Our ISIS is on the ropes. We're stacking them like cordwood. And I've come to the conclusion, Sean, that the bigger threat to America is the Shia jihadism of All Iran. Right, so then let me ask the Imam. Imam, is it wrong the way Iran practice, practices Sharia law? You know, now you are talking about Sharia law. Looks like uh, President Trump is talking about Sharia law when he is talking about uh, death penalty. Because it has to do but with by this. the way, because what about, I'm asking Dr. So Gurkha. Mom, Dr. You're being Gurkha, angry and defensive. Why are you so Dr. defensive? Gurkha, what, what about Joseph Christian? What about uh, James Alex? What about uh, Stephen uh, Paddock? You, you never mm -hmm. ask me about this question. They okay. are the American we just had eight version of ISIS. We just had eight people slaughtered. You, you never answer. talk to no, sir, I'll I'll answer the question. Terror. Eight people you slaughtered, never, and the man Sean. said, oh, let me finish, and I'll send it to Dr. Gorka. Allahu Akbar. That's What's what he said, which Akbar? we hear all the time, Dr. Gorka. Right. He shouted, God, Allah, is greater. And we every single attack of significance, we see an individual who says they're a Muslim, they're a jihadi. We are not at war with Islam, but we are at war with people who say, I'm going to kill you because you're an infidel. That is the there threat is, to there America. There is nothing wrong with Allahu Akbar, Sean. There is nothing wrong. That means God is great. Why does it happen problem, in every terror incident? Problem, Why do we have so often? The problem is not in, Allahu Akbar. The problem Imam, is Imam, with those who don't follow Allahu Why Akbar. Why do we hear it so often, like on 9-11 and like this week, there's eight dead New Yorkers. I live in New York. I take it personally. Eight dead New Yorkers, many more injured. Why do we keep hearing it when there are these terror attacks? Why? When, Why does the when, country you support, Iran, talk when, about the death of America and the right. death of the, Israel and well, burn the Sean, American Sean, flag? The problem, let me answer, the problem is not with God is great. You believe God is great, don't you? Uh, Dr. Gorka, do you believe God?
God is great. The Do I say God is great in the people? No, the problem is, let, listen, please. The problem is with those people who don't follow God, don't follow Allah. You mean like Somebody the Iranians? Say, you mean like the, the hostile regime that is Iran, Dr. Gorka? Where, where they, Dr. You, Gorka. Okay, let's be very clear here. We're talking about a regime that is a theocracy, that says religion controls everything. We're talking about a regime that just now, the Ayatollah said that the United States is its number one enemy. This is a hostile, aggressive regime that is destabilizing the whole region. Funding terror. For, well, it, it's from 1979. Fighting fighting terrorism. Sebastian. Well, Dr. Dr. Gorka, so, so many people are you very much. I know that you support Israel and you are more Israeli than Net Netanyahu. But there are a lot of people. There are a lot <laughs> of people it. who say that you are Nazi and you justify the genocide of Jews in Germany. Is that true? I mean, there are lots of Dr. talk Gorka, all over. All right, let him talk, uh, Dr. Gorka. Uh, well, look, yeah, Dr. Look, and they, they even question talk. your citizenship because they Dr. say... Dr. Gorka. There are a lot of people who've said very nasty things about me and the president, and uh, I would be very, very concerned if the New York Post, Politico, BuzzFeed, CNN said nice things about me because they're not interested in the things that I'm interested in when it comes to the safety of this yeah, nation. But you, Dr. Right, so Gorka, you, Dr. Right Gorka, there. Guys, you never call a guy who keeps... When we come back, you ever think of me as a rapper? Thanks to Comedy Central, I am and a really good story and good news to tell you. Straight ahead. Blending and my advice, bring tissues. Go to Hannity.com. We hope you'll go see it this weekend. Tell your friends to go see it. Before we go tonight, this is a pretty funny. All right, the producers of The Daily Show, they think I'm a rapper. Not kidding. Watch this. What about investigating their roles in Russia? Hillary Clinton's State Department, Eric Holder, signed off on the deal. A year later, Bill Clinton makes a fortune, doubles his speaking fees, paid with a check from a bank that has a financial interest in Uranium One. America tonight is at a crisis point. Will we have equal justice under the law, or will America just be a banana republic? Ticket, 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 Sean Shady. Ah, forget it. <laughs> that was awesome. All right, that's all the time we have left uh, for tonight. We'll always be fair and balanced. We're not the left-wing, biased, anti-Trump, destroy Trump media. Thank you for being with us. By the way, Laura Ingram is next. All right, so Clarence Thomas one night. Then we got the president the next night. Anybody else you're going to, you know, outshadow us with these phenomenal bookings? By the no, way, I'm gonna, great, I'm I saw add, the interview. I'm, great interview. <laughs> well, you're a movie producer with a fancy.